Okay, so we have an RCI 2950. I want to show, and it's not only on this chassis, you'll see this on any of these black box export radios. It's a popular modification, and about the only thing I can say is, stop it. <laughs> it looks good on a watt meter, and sounds like shit on air, and you're actually losing power. Um, and I want to show that, that it's no BS, you're actually losing power, and it's extremely distorted. So, the modification, you'll occasionally, if you ever take the bottom covers off of your radio. You look over here, there's a big transistor mounted over here on the side, the regulator. Okay, and you'll often see, if the person that did it, now yeah, this one's had problems before, and it's another thing. You do all these high power mods, you end up doing shit like this, burning traces off of the board. There used to be a copper trace right there. There used to, this, you know, it's, you're overloading shit. <laughs> but, You'll often see something like this, okay? A little piece of heat shrink tubing, there's some parts in there, bodged across two terminals right here. Now, I want to show, because I have actually one leg, you can see that, uh, it's something white so you can see it underneath of it. I've got one leg right there, is disconnected, okay? And what I'm going to do is, is just touch that to re reinstall that in circuit. So, and I want to show that to you on an oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer at the same time. And you judge for yourself if this modification, now you'll notice, and what I want you to really take a look at, is, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a 1000 hertz tone through a microphone. So basically just like a user would be using it, but instead of using a voice, we're going to use a tone so we can get a good stable uh, view on the scope and spectrum analyzer. It's not going to be changing an audio frequency. But what you'll notice on the spectrum analyzer is you'll see the carrier actually increase, and that's where you'll actually see on a power meter or a watt meter, you'll see your power go up. But watch the sidebands. The sidebands are where the information is, where your basically your voice, okay? That's the modulation. You'll actually see those sidebands decrease. Well, if the sidebands decrease, that means that your modulation has decreased. So you're not actually putting out as much power, you know, audio power, as you were before. So you're actually less power. So let's look at that. So actually we can turn this scope off because that one's not being used at the moment. So we have trying to get both of these in the screen at the same time. Right about there. Okay. So if I ah of course not ah, darn it. My spring-loaded camera mount swings up and away, trying to work around the camera. So if I key the microphone, there's our carrier, and you can see as I talk, even the mic's just holding it far away, it's still picking up a little bit of modulation. Okay, now with that unhooked, I'm going to turn on 1000 hertz so you can hear, you can hear that. Okay, I'll hold the microphone there, and you can see we have have not quite reached 100% modulation. And if you look up here, you can see that center spike, okay, that's your carrier, and then on the outside, that's the upper and lower sideband. So that's the modulation, okay. Now watch what happens when I put that little thing back in circuit. Look at the, for starters, look down there at the oscilloscope. Yeah, you just took a almost 100% modulation and just turned it into there's a horrible negative peak, which is the dips, and then the tops are box card. It, it, it's just horrible sounding on air, too. But now if you look up, up here, you'll notice as I move that in and out, watch the carrier, which is that center peak, you'll see it go up and down. When, it's, when that little modification is in circuit, you'll see the, the carrier power increase, but then watch the two sidebands, which is where your audio is at, you'll actually see them decrease, okay? So watch those, those spikes. Okay, there's it out of circuit. There's it in circuit. Out of circuit. In circuit. So you can see the modulation has actually decreased. We have less power going out. We have more carrier, but the carrier does absolutely nothing as far as... Uh, because that's all it does. It's carry. Basically, that's why it's called a carrier. It's carrying your audio. Okay. 
which is those sidebands. Well, the sidebands actually decrease with that in circuit. And you'll also notice when it's in circuit, see if I can get it to stay there without me holding it, you'll notice if you look at all this other junk, with you know, your spurious emissions basically, they're down considerably, but look how much lower they are with it out of circuit. Okay? Now, I have the span currently set to 30 kilohertz, which is represents three channels. So the channel we're talking on, and then the two, ch the two adjacent channels. So with it out of circuit, we can see there's not really a lot in the adjacent channels. But when I put it in circuit, look at all that crap now that's going into the adjacent channels. Out of circuit, in circuit. So we've lost transmit audio modulation, but we've increased the spurious emissions, you know, and everything going into adjacent channels, we've increased the carrier power, but the whole idea behind doing modifications, if anything, should be to increase your audio output so you can be heard better. By doing this, you're actually decreasing, you know, because like I say, that's what you want, that's what you don't want. What you want, what you don't want. So, there you go. There's just a another prime example of popular modifications you will see all the time in radios. Um, stupid stuff like this, you know. It, and the, that's the problem. Let me turn this audio generator off. The problem is, for starters, it's now stressing the radio because it is using more power because it's 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 generating all of those extra spurious emissions off on the sides. It's creating more carrier power, which we really don't need. And we're losing what we want, those sidebands, which is your audio modulation. Um, so it's harder on components in the radio. It sounds horrible on air because you could see on the oscilloscope how horribly distorted that was. There's absolutely no way in the world that could possibly sound sound good, you know. But the, the key is it looks good on a watt meter. So when someone does something like this to your radio, and they show you on just a meter, you know, on a watt meter or something like that, it cannot discriminate between peaks, negative, uh, you know, modulation, uh, you know, the adjacent channel power. It's just measuring all of the power that's going into it. All of it. It doesn't care where it's at, basically, in the RF spectrum, within reason. I mean, they do. Those meters are only accurate, usually, for a, uh, up to a certain frequency range, usually maximum, like, 30 megahertz and, and less. But, uh, like I say, they're measuring all of the RF energy that goes into them. And they don't care what it looks like or what it sounds like on air. But that's the selling point. People charge you however much they charge to install one of these stupid modifications. You know, there's 10 cents worth of parts there and they charge you however many dollars to do it, and then they show you the before and after on a power, on just a watt meter, you know, they, and they go, you know, hey, look here, you were doing, you know, 15 watts before, and now you're doing 20, 25, hell, 30 watts or something like that. Well, yeah, you may, may very well be doing up to twice as much power, but it has actually degraded or reduced the actual amount of power you're putting out on the channel you want to talk on and now you're so horribly distorted that you're hard to understand. So all I have to say about modifications like this is stop it. Not only is it in the long term will it damage your radio, you know, over overpowering components causes that's why shit like this, this trace that's burned off of this board that somebody had to repair with a piece of wire, you know, if you leave radios alone to do what they're supposed to do, the way the manufacturers designed them, you wouldn't you wouldn't have crap like that happening all the time. And pretty much every radio you ever see that has burned off traces, you can pretty much be guaranteed modulation limiters are crypt, clipped, AM, you know, AMC, ALC limiters, stuff like this has been installed, vaulted finals, I mean, the list just goes on and on. People are always finding more ways to make their radios sound more horrible and splatter all over the RF spectrum. So, you know, stuff like this, you should really stop doing it. So when somebody says, hey, man, I can I can just tack a couple parts on the underside by your AM regulator there, man, you'll get, man, you'll be the king of the pile on AM. Well, honestly, no, you're not. You're going to be distorted, and you're actually going to have less power on that channel. 
it's it's great if you want to talk to the people off on the other channels. And if I had put the spectrum analyzer out at 54 megahertz, you would also notice that the the second harmonic energy increases as well. So yeah, great if you want to talk to somebody on television, but not so great if you actually want to talk to somebody on the channel that you're actually on. So there's a little tip on saving yourself some money, saving yourself some damage to radios because they're being overdriven, and actually sounding good on air.